Hi, everybody. Let's get started. Today is August 28th. I can't believe the month is almost over, nearing September, nearing the Labor Day weekend. So I hope all of you have plans. Let's get into some stats. The AUM is at 185.9 million. The elephant MCAP is at 40.3 million. The Treasury is at 3.7 million. The trunk MCAP is at 36.3 million. We are currently staked at 721.25, and the trading volume of elephant money is up 191.7% um, from one day ago and is at $21,279.98. Ed, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Josie. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You ready for uh, September? You ready? You have uh, you have off on Monday? Um, I do. I that's do. Good. That is good. I I literally when she said that I go in my head I'm going oh that's right that's that's like <laughs> three times I've caught myself not remembering that we had the day off and I probably would have come in on that Monday if somebody doesn't say anything I just just normally just drive in and be like where's everybody at and don't go to work no I I'm, I'm, that's never happened yet but it was it was getting close it, it come close <laughs> a couple of times um, what you doing anything for the weekend staying in town just chilling in the city. I'm actually going to go to Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, nice! It's also my birthday next week, so I'm going to just hang out. Have a good oh, time. you're a uh, you're a Virgo. I am. Same day as oh. Beyonce. Oh, Jesus! All right, mine is. Um, I forgot who with celebrities on my birthday. Uh, uh, there are a couple. I just know Christian Slater. That's all I can remember. Oh, that's a there's good a couple one. others. Yeah, there's a couple others. I just can't remember who they are. Um, all right. Um, for those you wonder, BT's coming on today. He did tell me yesterday. Yes. So you just not logged on yet. Yeah, final final spaces of, of August. Always a good month because it's my birthday month. So I always love the month of August. And um, eight months down, um, you know, four more to go. I think we, we've done pretty darn good so far this year uh, with all the ups and downs and stuff. Uh, you know, some people may see it a little different than I do, but I have a maybe a broader perspective of how I think things are going to be going here. So I, I really feel like um, it's gone pretty good and the summer has actually gone pretty nice. Um, uh, all things, um, EVM. I just saw you just posted a video like 20, like 15 minutes ago. Let me see how long it is. If I can listen to it real quick. And, um, you just brought up something that I was, I would thought about, I would say, and that's, you know, people bringing in new people. I know a lot of you have brought people in through the Binance side, but you know, if you do have any new people coming in, um, bring them in on the Solana side, have them download that phantom wallet and uh, go to you know the jupiter exchange and get them over here and that that's how they can buy the trunk on this side i know we're trying to you know drain the lps on the other side but no reason to be teaching them all that stuff from bridging and all that right away i mean i don't even know if it's good if you brought somebody in on the first day i don't even know if it's good to have them even start out with a cold wallet i, I don't i think that's too much for them to learn so i think having them just start out getting the phantom wallet being careful what they're doing and um hold on one second okay and just buying the trunk from there would be probably the best thing that they could do if you've been bringing somebody in because i know people have had questions about which wallet and i saw some people mention which cold wallet and i don't know what the best best cold wallet is because everybody has their own opinion on that i mean i've i was talking we we mentioned it this week somebody brought up the ledger and i said let me see if i still have the email from when i bought my ledger and I bought it May 25th, 2017 was when I bought my first Ledger Nano S. I think that's the name of it. Uh, I opened it up, learned how to use it, tried to plug it into my computer. And I don't even, I, I didn't even really move any funds over there. It was just, it was just, I had it. I knew how to use it. And then I never ended up using it. So it's just been sitting in my drawer ever since, drawer ever since. Um, but, you know, obviously those are many options out there for your cold wallet um let's see um so you know this week uh people we we're always trying to tell you guys you know about your emotions and and watch out and don't always let them make decisions for you i know a lot of people have been sending me direct messages and trying to ask me some questions and what should i do i i hear this i hear that and you know you guys got to um this is something you guys got to do on your own you got to decide what what do you want to listen to and what you don't want to listen to what gossip what news what you're letting go into your ear and through your brain and, and what you're just going to be like no I, it's kind of like you know if you have some you know me i'm the one that's saying get out of the side chat i know not all of you will 
most of you won't obviously uh we actually had a couple people that did do that and they sent me a message and they said hey look i heard what you said and uh, i actually just thought about it and i actually jumped out of a chat or two um just because i didn't really feel like i needed to listen to that kind of stuff every single day and i, I kind of think about that with just people in my neighborhood growing up hung out with these one friends and then there's this other friends he was kind of cool and he would always just somehow get into trouble or he always had something going on there was just something something would happen that wasn't good when we hung out and sooner or later you just have to say you know what i just cannot surround myself with somebody like that i just that's just not me i gotta be in a better place than that and you know stop hanging out with that kid and i feel like i'm, I'm better that i didn't otherwise some things might have happened in my life that uh, maybe shouldn't have or so I think about that with the chat rooms too, when you guys are out there, is that what you really want to sit around and listen to all day? Is, is that, is that it? Or do you want to come find a place that's uh, better suited for you? And I think you got to think about that when it comes to crypto and your money, not just crypto either it could be your stocks. You could be in a chat room for stocks or any of your investments and hear people like that. And so, if you don't mind letting that bother you in your mind or hearing that stuff all day long and get letting it get under your skin and and all that then then enjoy it but if you feel like hey you really need to focus a little more <clears throat> a little more positivity in your life and a little more um proper information that you're getting then i'm sure you guys can figure out what decision that is on your own um shout out the blackberry guy i saw have just logged on and when it comes to emotions i know shankar would talk about it the most about your emotions and i don't even think shankar's in here today mm, i don't think i see him but he was he's really good about that he, uh, you know he's been doing he's not an entrepreneur for no reason he knows how to deal with situations like that when it comes to emotions and investing uh when things are going great that, that's when things are going down because that's when a lot of people start getting emotional but you get emotional too when things are going up because then you start thinking, Hey, I, I need to find some money. I need, I need to get in. I need to FOMO. I need to FOMO on that. That's an emotion also. But when things aren't going the exact way that you would like it, it only probably takes two or three people out of a hundred to get under your skin compared to when things are going great. It would probably take over 50 or 60 people to, to, for you to realize, Oh yeah, shoot, this is going great. One person telling you things are going great. Doesn't really affect you as much as one person you telling you things are going bad. But Shankar was always pretty good at, at the emotion thing. And if anyone out there actually has some kind of content, maybe they know a good book. Some people like to read books. And if you have a book you want to recommend to somebody, feel free to post it or say it right now and let us know or, or put it in the telegram that when it comes to emotion and investing, if you have a book that talks about that and how to understand it, how to manage yourself about that, would love to um hear what that book is i mean i'll probably even read it myself some of you guys <clears throat> asked me that don't you get all pissed off with what's going on ed and how come you know why aren't you to sell and you see something go down i'm really kind of like a, a lot different than you think i'm very like stone cold emotionally a lot so a lot of things don't affect me too much they might get to me sooner or later but not all the time so when it comes to stuff like this, uh, it what holds me the most, and when I tell you guys that I'm buying and I'm buying and I'm buying, is probably because, you know, the admin do have a chat, and we all we're all talking all the time, and so I do get to hear some things that you know we might not announce to you quite yet until they come to fruition. Uh, we might have some ideas in our heads or say, hey, we want to do this, we should focus on that, and you know we have our little team building and things like that. We have our voice chats and that kind of in my head, I go, okay, I know the main chat can't see some of the stuff, some of the stuff we just can't announce until it's, you know, set in stone. And, but I could see what's in front of us and the possibilities. And that's probably why, um, it's one of the reasons that keeps me in the, in the mindset that I am and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I just listen to BT. I mean, if I listen to him. If I go in a side chat and I, I listen to some other guy that really has no idea what's going on, I would probably make some bad decisions. But I know BT is always like six steps ahead of us. So I know when I hear him say something, he's already thinking October. He's already thinking November, December in 2025. 
So that's why I know it emotionally, the prices and trunk elephant and a cheese, all that stuff. It doesn't bother me. The position room right now was the treasury was Bertha doesn't bother me because I see what's in front of us and I know what we have coming. So I hope you guys can take, when you hear something from an admin, understand that we are telling you stuff because we really, really think you should listen to what we're trying to tell you. And hopefully you can get some of those emotions out of your head. Um, I know Bank Teller is on now. I was just trying to hold off long enough to talk to you guys until uh, he came on. Um, I know you're still just a listener, BT, so I'll wait for you to jump on as far as a speaker. Somebody tried to call me during spaces. Um, and hopefully we'll squeeze some alpha out of them too. But uh, really want to hear what happened at a Vest Fest, how good. It, I saw that booth. That was some really good pictures uh, over the last weekend. So it was pretty cool to see. That was, that was a setup. Compared to Nashville, we were at a rooftop hanging out, and that was fun. But to see the couches and all that stuff there, that was really, really cool to see the setup and the amount of people that were. I did not know until I think BT said a couple of spaces ago how big Invest Fest is, how many people are there, and how much wealth is actually in that building at one time. So it was nice that he was able to uh, shake a few hands and meet some people there. And I'm looking forward to our next event, which I'm hoping is going to come before BTC in Vegas in May, but. If it doesn't, that's cool. I'll save more money and spend more money when it comes to Vegas time. Um, let me know when you're ready, BT. Uh, Blackberry guy, hope you're doing well, man. All things EVM, man. Appreciate all the videos you're putting out there. Hope you got a lot of content for that documentary we're going to be doing. Um, oh, you're a speaker, uh, EVM, if you want to jump on while we're waiting for BT. Yeah, we had a great time in Ash, in, uh, in Atlanta at InvestFest. Um, really uh, positive conversations, a lot of which we got on camera. So that was great to see. Um, you know, we BT had a ton of just one-on-ones with a lot of movers and shakers in the in the industry in that. Um, and I, I won't. <laughs> I'll let him talk about uh, the details of that. So I can't divulge anything yet, but uh, I will be probably posting some at least behind the scenes footage on Monday as it's Labor Day. I'm going to try to make the video ahead of time and uh, you guys can watch that then. It'll probably be more B-roll type stuff instead of actual conversations as I'll probably keep a lot of that for, you know, the final documentary, but uh, you get to see kind of who he's talking to and and uh, the scope of what InvestFest looked like. There's tons of people there um like yeah like bt said a, a lot of net worth high net worth individuals um major influencers in the investment space and uh, bt was there talking with a lot of them so that was awesome um shout out to zach and all the other um, herd members that came to support and were there every single day for you know tw 12 hours ish for uh for that booth and uh getting to each one teach one to every, anybody who stopped by. Um, I was holding a camera most of the time, <laughs> so it wasn't uh, wasn't um, too involved. But every once in a while, there would be somebody, "Hey, what's up with Elephant Money?" Like, and I'd mean, just you know drop the camera for a second, do a little each one teach one, and get back on the camera. So um, it was fun to be there. I uh, I think the uh, the cameras definitely attracted some some more people there too, as as well as the big uh, signage that we had and um, use those iPads to get, show people what was up with uh, with elephant money, show, show them the chart, show them um, the yield and the uh, saved up finance market. And a lot of people were really interested. Um, some really sophisticated investors, uh, people that know DeFi well, um, really got to, to take, take a look at what we're doing on the Solana side. And I'm sure that's where we're going to see some growth um, as BT winds up some some of those uh, some of those deals that he's talked about. Yeah, I forgot you guys had the camera there. That is a big. I mean, you had a really nice area. I mean, twenty by twenty is pretty sweet, especially with the couches. But when you have a camera there and you're filming, it's just going to draw people over no matter what to find out what's going on. So that that was a really cool thing to have going as well, which kind of added to yeah, it. 100%. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and people. 
We're actually located right next to like a main stage as well. And the, the only stage in the vendor booth area was right next to our uh, booth. And so we got a lot of traffic. We were basically right in the center of everything. Um, <laughs> DJ music pumping the whole day, uh, a lot of hype. Um, so anytime a speaker was done on that or a panel was done on that stage, they would immediately turn around and be right in our booth. So it was just great traffic and, uh, um, some great, great interactions. Hey, you know what? Even at a place like that, it's still about location, location, location. You know, you could have been stuck in a corner. You know, I, I know how those things kind of work. And I also know how hard you guys work because you would think, okay, we just have a booth for, oh, for the day. It's not that easy. I mean, you're at a booth. Uh, and especially if you're there like 12 hours and, you know, I've, you ever go to some of these things and you just see some booths that nobody ever stops by the person, man in the booth to sit on their phone the whole time, you know, and just, they don't get the traction, but you guys made sure it was set up sweet. So that was really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, it was a great place to hang out with all the couches. People would just take a break there and we'd end up chatting with them. Um, so that was, that was just nice. Cool, cool. I hope we do get a handful of, of people into Elephant Money that way. I know Zach had said that he already has a few. I told him to reach out to me and let me know their screen name so I can make sure that when they come to the Telegram, they get some attention right away and don't, you know, people don't think that somebody's just jumping in to ask some FUD questions. So I want to make sure we found out who they are and give them as much attention as we can so they can um, get onboarded. So that, that's appreciate all the work you did while you're there, man. Can't wait to see you at the next event. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Blackberry guy. What's up, man? I see bank teller's not on speaker yet. He's just listening at the moment. So, uh, might as well keep going until he gets ready. Hi, Abby. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Sounds I am like it. doing good. Yes, I am. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Well, I just, I just thought I'd take a few moments, uh, since uh, we're waiting for bank teller, but uh, one of the things that's been on my mind here in the last few days, is, as I've mentioned not that long ago, that I was going to go to a every other week format with my my update. Uh, and I'm not saying that's going to be in stone. It's just been while I've moved into the area where I am now, it seems like every day has been filled with a lot of things, and that may come down to a cooling point at some point. Uh, and I may be able to go weekly again uh, as time goes on. But uh, and and I've, I know I know even just for myself it's good because I can kind of get a gauge of how things are from week to week when I keep the stats. So, but the other thing that that came to my mind is, and I have this every once in a while. I, I don't put out the videos like everybody else that is great at that does. Um, but every once in a while, I, I have a desire to do that. And this is one of them. I just think that it's time to, because uh, when I do when I do them, I, I like to try as best I can to try to give some good research and and give a, I'm always trying to give a factual and, and you know, solid per perspective. I hope I am. But I'm hoping to do that, that too with what's been going on lately, um, something not that long ago is that, you know, the, the tools are there, uh, like with futures, it's, they're there. And if we continue to show our faith there, uh, we're going to be just fine. And that's one of the things I wanted to bring up is just how futures is working right now. And, uh, not only that, but then to, to talk a little bit about the safe finance system. And, and, and I just think I need to, do my part or continue to do my part and bring as much positivity as I can to what's going on. And so that's what I'm hoping to do. I, I'm not exactly sure when that video will come out and I don't know if there's going to be a few more developments before then, but, uh, I, I want to give, I want, I want to, I, I see people, uh, you know, as it were on the front lines and, and providing good information, providing, uh, encouragement and i still want to be able to do that uh, in the days to come and so that's just something that's on my mind that i'm working on and uh we'll uh we'll see exactly when that comes out but uh, in the meantime um i'll certainly put out the updates when i updates when i can 
but I'm also hoping I can put out a solid video for, for everybody. Yeah, I mean, we all know what your face looks like now after Nashville, so you might as well start being on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I kind of thought that myself, even with retirement. It's a time where I was kind of staying behind the camera, and now I'm I'm all right with being in front of it now. So, uh, uh, and 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 that was never because I wanted to be. Uh, I, I don't know. Just if, if I can be in front of it, that that always adds a little bit of credit to credibility to everything. But uh, there was I had my reasons for that, but uh, those reasons are gone now. So um, I'm happy to I'm happy for people to see my my uh, my beautiful 63 year old face. So. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, we we yeah, anyway. whether you're on video or you just make your your post every couple of weeks with your report. That that you're always doing. You're always you're always doing a great job, so we always appreciate that, man. And if it's a video version next time, uh, it's going to be even better. Well, we've we've certainly uh, I've certainly been encouraged by a lot of people uh, as I've been doing these over the over the weeks, and that always spurs me on too. It's, I've always said before that if it's if it's worthwhile to everybody that I do them, then I'll do them. But just to talk so that I can talk and uh try to make a name for myself and no that's not that's not what this is about it's just trying to help out where i can and if that's what's going on uh then i'm happy to do them and like i said maybe i'll maybe i'll go back to you know we'll see how it goes with the weekly thing uh uh it, it may go, we may go back to that but uh certainly every other week for sure and um uh, main thing is is that i'm not going away that's that's for sure because i don't see the reason to do that so uh looking forward to to being of help in the in the near future again yeah. or throughout the future and i'm sure you will be man especially when it comes to futures um I'm, I'm still doing my thing i still do mine i'm trying to squeeze it once a week now if i can but i'm still at the once every two weeks uh, at the moment uh and and literally, like BT said, like a couple of two spaces ago when it was around his birthday, he's like, if everybody would have compounded just just one time for me, just compound, skip your skip your claim, throw your 200 in there, uh, you would have seen a very big difference uh, in the entire thing of futures, what's going on. Uh, just that, that much money yeah. with all those wallets would have just done that. But um, people have their right. own, you know, they do, they can, it's, hey, it's, you can, you're allowed to do whatever you want. That's fine. Um, so... We do, right. you know. Well, and yeah, and I and I know that for myself that, um, sure, um, annuities uh, or uh, excuse me, futures is, um, yeah, I've I've got a, I've got a within my own family we've got a variety of situations that way as far as how you know how we're using futures, but for the majority of them, the, the reason they're in it is not for the here and now it's for it's for the longer term and so they're looking at it as an annuity that that's and i still am strongly a, a believer that that's how it was set up and i've had that confirmed by uh, uh i think uh yeah bank teller himself has spoken of it that way and so i tend to look i've tended to look at it as that kind of a product and if people would continue to look you know on the whole would look at it that way i think you know what's going on in the near term it won't be nearly uh, an issue as it would be for uh, if you'd be looking at it as as it was designed to be uh, to be used and that was for more of a long term play so um with that in mind, you know, and I think you mentioned it or or maybe it was Aaron who mentioned it, you know, if we can keep that long term mentality in mind, uh, if we can keep that vision, then uh, th then what's going on right now shouldn't shouldn't be as much of an impact to us as uh, as as it otherwise becomes. Um, the, the ability to still be able to compound whatever it is that you're accruing, whatever is, you know, the optimal, you know, when this all becomes very healthy again, uh, you're going to be thankful that you had that chance to continue to compound now because you'll really, it'll really impact you uh, 
uh, you know, down the line. And I, again, I guess I think that's just that to me, that's, I mean, look at the name, the name is futures. So it's, in itself is looking at things from a long-term point of view. And if we can keep that kind of vision, then I think we're going to minimize the panic um, and minimize the uneasiness that otherwise people might have. So uh, that's the approach I'm trying to take with that. And I hope more people share it. Yeah, I'm taking the same approach. And I know some of the uneasiness and the panic is just to really, really just a small amount of people because I'm, it's just the handful that are just yelling a little bit louder than the people that are just chilling in the recliner, just relaxing and enjoying futures as it's supposed to be. Um, you know, I know quite a few whales in the top, I'll say top 50 wallets. So, and they're not really budging much, you know, they're kind of enjoying it. So, all right. right. Well, right. you know what? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, man. Uh, BT is finally on here. And so I think we should leave him the last half hour to um, take over. And I'll put in the comments who won the NFT. Uh, BT, what's going on, man? You were back from that, Na uh, not Nashville. You were back from Invest Fest. And I know it's been good times uh, last weekend. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Invest Fest is really good. Uh, uh, a lot of name recognition. You know, when when we walk down, it's like, oh, that's that guy from uh, from Elephant Money or da da da. da. You know, it's like we were, right, we were right at the center of the uh, marketplace. Um, uh, have pretty good uh, relationship with the founder. Um, actually, turns out that my uh, my my landlord, who's actually trying to sell the place I'm in right now. Uh, I, I I I expanded from a, a a two bedroom that I've been in for quite a while now to um, it's a it actually costs about the same amount of money maybe a little bit more but uh, it has uh, six bedrooms they go really it sounds like it's a lot but they go really quick because you know I have two daughters um, you know. Sometimes they don't like to, they like to do different things. So we have like a lounge and stuff, but uh, and then we have a guest room. So, and then I have an office. So all those rooms are accounted for, but um, uh, just something to stretch my legs right down the street from the Y, you know, uh, right close to, to Providence downtown. It was, it's nice. Um, but yeah, my landlord, he actually uh, turned out to be good friends with the the founders of Earn Your Leisure and stuff, and like you know, so they just known each other for for since they were like, you know, in their twenties. Um, so a uh, small world, you never you never know, and uh, and you know me, I'm just like I'm not I'm not afraid to say hello to anyone, so. Uh, you know, the last time when I was leaving the, uh, the conference, I said hello to the founder, um, uh, uh, Michael McDonald and, um, and, uh, this time I said uh, bye to his, his brother, him again as a vendor. And they were like, wow, you know, uh, maybe I'll be on stage next time. And I think based on the things that we're about to do, um, I think we will be. Uh, just to give people an update on, you know, like Ed was talking about, like things that we talk about in sort of like the back office that we can't necessarily, you know, talk about until, until letters, letters of intent and things like that are signed. Um, um, and commitments are made, but um, the the deals are the deals are coming. At least one 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 massive deal that's gonna you know a, anyone can uh, use is is definitely gonna come. Um, but um, I think you have to also understand when the market's red. When everything's when everything's dumping, a lot of times, you know, 
remember people are in a diversified portfolio and remember that they may sell their winners. You know, for, for people who got in at four cents, anyone who's dumping out a trumpet, those are people who are selling their winners, you know? Um, and is that panic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, those are, those are people uh, selling their winners. Like, you know, we did some forensics and, you know, some, you know someone's dumping almost a million trunk back into the LPs um, at the worst time. So that's your opportunity. Just like, you know, unfortunately, when some people were um, uh, on the trunk supply side in the, in the save that finance pool when they got liquidated, um, if you zoom all the way out and you remember the fundamentals of this, this whole thing, it's about risk management, um, uh, diversification and, um, personal responsibility. So, and that, and, and no one is immune to that, including myself. So, you know, um, like for the folks that said, Oh, I lost my whole trunk bag. First question, why was your whole trunk bag in there? Like, why was all of it in there? Like, why wasn't, uh, why was there not a, a no touch moon bag on a ledger, right? These are, these are the basic fundamental things that we, that are constantly preached to us, not just by me or, you know, uh, members of the elephant money team or, um, people in the community. These are just basic things that like Joe blow YouTuber that you've been following for year forever, or um, things that you will find in a book about cryptocurrency, or things that you would find in a book about general investing, correct? Like, um, be properly diversified, use proper risk management, um, have both a short term and a long term plan, mostly long term It's called investing, not gambling. So um, and remember that as much as all of these technologies and things like that are beautiful, um, let's not forget what we learned from Bitcoin. It really is all about that, that, the, 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 those particular digital assets. A lot of things can be built on Bitcoin or a lot of things can be built on elephant and trunk, but at the core, these tokens have basic tokenomics, um, and lock liquidity. And there are for sure people that have never really done anything else, participated in anything else, um, and just held the tokens this whole time and they're up. Right. Um, right. They, there's people who have had trunk and, uh, put it in trumpet and, and really not touched it. So I say all that because, um, and I'm tired because I, uh, was working on, I was working with the, I was working with the soul end team. And I was working with the switchboard team, um, our Oracle, for some reason, it was, it had a lease of 16, 16 Solana that was working just fine to, um, pay out the push, uh, updates for, for the price. And that was magically drained somehow. So like, instead of, instead of just trying to refund that and have it happen again. That's why the price was sale since 3 p.m. yesterday. Um, that didn't cause price drop though. Price drop was caused by, you know, a couple people in Trumpet dumping their bags, um, basically getting out. Like these are long-term players that know what the deal is and they're like, still just dumping. But anyway, not to, 
Uh, I'm not going to go into that too much. But um, anyway, work with the Solen team and save that finance team. And um, switched over to their on-demand Oracle, which is free. Um, and, you know, work with both of them to improve the Oracle a little bit. You know, so now it, you know, uses a variety of order sizes, takes the mean of those, takes into account slippage, things like that. Awesome. Um, and now we don't have to worry about paying for Oracle anymore. Um, and um, you know, Solon team has been very uh, helpful with my request. Uh, I think they understand that things are going to take time. Um, in terms of the negative equity, um, and I very much understand why we're there. Like, you know, fo folks, um, suppliers, you know, if you, you kept your funds, if you, if, if the suppliers, you know, put their funds down and leave them down, they'll be earning and, uh, people who are borrowing could do what they need to do. And that helps with everything so but when supply usd suppliers pull their supply it doesn't help at all um so to that end um had quite a few conversations but just know um, at these types of things uh one of the largest one of the, one of the largest sort of archetypes for an investor at these things is real estate. Because if you ask people, how did they become wealthy? They're probably gonna say real estate. Why is that? Because real estate is actually, actually the number one way people become wealthy by owning land and property. That's how it's always been. Before there was a stock market, before all, all that, there was still real estate. And, and and there probably will still always be real estate. Is it the best horse? Is it the fastest horse? No. Is it a good way to protect wealth? Becoming less and less so. Um, but it can make sure you're not homeless. <laughs> it can make sure that uh, you have some income coming in. Um, like home ownership has is not it hasn't been what it's like sort of promised to be for a while but but um but if you own a four unit building and live in one unit or something like that or or, or, or scale up from there that that's it's just still interesting and then you can always just with with commercial properties there's lots of incentives and strategies for scaling up. So that's what a lot of people do. But those those things take time and they're slow. Or, you know, it'd be like 10%, uh, you know, 10% APR per year on, on real estate in general, maybe a little bit higher on commercial. Uh, and then you have, and then whatever you have to do for upkeep might eat into that. You know, if you're trying, if you're trying to be an investor in real estate, you, you could just buy a REIT and get the dividends, you know, delivered to you. Uh, um, so when they see something like what we've done, when they see, no, no one in that room built any type of business that got up to 75 million in 30 days, except for bank tellers. Except for us, elephant money, the herd, no one. So on that alone, already been invited to a similar conference. Um, we'll get a little bit more um, bang for my buck as a as a sponsor and a speaker. You actually get a speaker slot and all that stuff. 
Um, here's the thing. As you start getting these speaking spots, spots and stuff like that, as you start to, like, I, I would call this, um, high net worth, uh, you know, the, the, they're people of all, they're people of all types there. Right. And, you know, you got the fidelities there, black rocks there, you know, large and small banks, independent banks there. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's put on by two guys from, from New York city, uh, uh, Rashad Bilal and Troy Millings. Uh, and then you have um, Ian Dunlap. Uh, I think he's out of Texas, who runs a big um, uh, runs a big investor group. Uh, Troy Millings used to be a, or a basketball teacher. I think he might still do that a little bit, or a phys ed teacher. Um, Rashad Bilal is a, 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 a financial a, a financial advisor um he's a financial advisor because his dad is a financial advisor i think the name of their their, their company out of new york is Bilal group um you know his dad had a booth it was like a small modest booth not big as ours but um but he had a booth. I met, I met, I met his dad. I met his sister, Rashad's sister. And, um, yeah, they're right out of, uh, they're right out of, they're right out of, um, New York and, um, they're, he's working with products that are right, that are right, right, right in Boston. Uh, Mass Mutual Insurance, um, you know, a little bit of Fidelity, uh, Bright House. Um, these are these are standardized products that financial advisors um, sell, resell to, resell to, um, you know, re, re, resell and help customize these products for individuals. And they get a commission, you know, from from all the big, from all the big, uh, the big financial and insurance institutions. So, anyway, um, so they've been doing this for a very long time. They have deep networks, um, and what you start to really understand, like I didn't meet his father last time. I knew he was a financial advisor, but I didn't know how deep it went. So when you see two generations of financial advisors, what do you really see? It's, it's, it's like Bilal Wealth, Wealth Management, LLC, whatever, the name of his father's company, which, you, which you're staring at right, right in your face is generational wealth, right? And these guys... These guys, so 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 the you know. These guys are in tune with you know, the culture, so to speak. You know, so. Um, the conference mainly uh, focuses on. Um, I would say the black and brown community. Uh, it's internet. Hear you anymore, BT?
if you just hear static. BT, I'm going to uninvite you, speaker, and nope, then reinvite nope, nope. you. Sorry, sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, uh, I don't know how much of that you missed, but um, did you get did you get the uh, part about uh, Bilal Wealth Management? I think you were just starting it. Oh, okay. So I'll go really quickly. Uh, Bilal Wealth Management, you know, that's that's Rashad. That's Rashad Bilal, one of the one of the co-founders' father. Met him. Met his sister. That's when he realized that, that they, they're, you know, that's two generations of financial advisors. That, that's generational wealth staring you in the face. Um, you know, these guys know uh, people that uh, invented, <laughs> invented and helped propel the culture, so to speak, um, while being, you know, pretty much squares <laughs> like you. You know, you know, Ian Ian runs a big investor group, uh, Red Panda. <clears throat> Rashad was a financial advisor. Uh, you know, working with his father, uh, Troy Millions is a a uh, phys ed coach. So these are the, the you know they come off cool, they have swag, but they're talking about really boring things. Um, Ian and Rashad, they have this. Uh, sort of blackout thing where they try to talk about spicier things. But if you <laughs> if you if you kind of scrape off the swag, they're still coming at it from a very sort of square, boring perspective. It, it, these are good people trying to help other good people do good things in the world. Um, and there's also a deep undercurrent of uh, uh, spirituality and faith that, that, that permeates throughout it. Um, I think when you, um, it's really hard to do, uh, some of the things that like all of these people are doing without leaning on spirituality or faith of some kind, um, to stay grounded because the work is so hard. Um, and you want to do it, uh, Sometimes the only thing you have left is faith when times are hard. Um, I would honestly say uh, at Elephant Money, we've seen harder times. This is, we have uh, a ton of opportunity, a ton of community, a lot of liquidity, and a small uh, liquidity crisis and, and credit crunch, you know? Uh, that was exacerbated by a sideways choppy market and bad actors uh, and wannabe competitors, you know, popping up at every turn. But um, other than that, I mean, we're great. This is nothing we haven't seen before. And seeing, and the things that we are seeing that are new are our opportunities uh, with these major players. And so, so um, there'll be more there soon. But I also want people to know that what we need, the change we seek is, is right in front of our face. That has never changed. Um, if you take 3,700 wallets times 200, guess what? That's 740 or 740K. So that doesn't change. So um, just taking action, just compounding in futures, that's all you need to do. And that's why the, that's why, you know, I work with the community, listen to the community as much as, as, as the system needs to be able to react to conditions on the ground, the power's still in our hands. Now the linkage to the linkage to uh, 
trunk is real. Since launching, um, since launching, we put a million trunk into the supercharger. Now we have 1.1, 1.16, I believe, million uh, trunk in the supercharger. So with the little bit of engagement that's there, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Supercharger is getting bigger. Uh, is Bertha getting bigger? No. Uh, because people are just, are, uh, and probably, to be honest, not all wallets are probably owned by one person. We, we know this. And some of those people are just you know, like $5 claims draining. You know, this is a financial cooperative. Um, you know, I, I could put the brakes in. I could have put the brakes in and say, um, you know, when you only can claim once a week and things like that. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to, sh so, sometimes you have to see it with your own eyes. You know, when we first launched V11, I said, when it's just launched and nothing's been funded, this is the worst that it could get. But I needed you to see it. I needed you to see what the worst could be. And I said, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna fund this thing and you guys need to row in the same direction. And if you just compound, we can easily dig our way out of this. Uh, but if you don't, we'll be right back at the position we are. I said that. That's not even chess. That's just checkers. Okay. Um, but I, but I, you needed to know what it was going to be collectively and what it was going to look like, you know, if we didn't row in the right direction. Um, by the look of the supercharger, some people got the memo. Um, and then by look of Bertha, a lot of people did. And uh, there's going to be people in side chats. I'm just going to be, I'm just going to say it out here. There's going to be people who did a lot of work for us in the past, but they have their own agenda that is very clear. And you have to be stupid to think that they have your best interest when they know, you know, that a good chunk of your effort, long-term effort, is locked in LPs that aren't going anywhere. So as much drama and commotion that's going on, we still have multi-million multi -million dollar LPs. And guess what? The people at InvestFest see that. They know that. They, they run businesses. They run communities of their own. They see all that. They're like, wow, you, this, this is amazing. We have never seen any of this. And the truth is, never seen any of it, never been as close to uh, the people that are doing the real work, never been as close to the opportunity because we really haven't even taken off yet. We have as much as we have because we've been doing this a long time. And that's the whole point of this all. Somebody was like, um, the graveyard has 22 million in it. Why can't we just take some from the graveyard? The graveyard's job is to hold when no, when everything else absolutely did not hold it. And that includes Bertha. Bertha is the whale that won't dump on you, but Bertha is responsible for all liabilities. So she absolutely will sell. And when it when and when it say Bertha is 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 responsible for all liabilities, that also means that Bertha's responsible. That's exactly what we did when we made our move to Solana. And that's why we're still alive. Um But Bertha was getting skinny no matter what when we were just tied to uh, Elephant, and Elephant was was you know, good or bad, dumped by the entire herd, including myself, for all different types of reasons. But the the bottom line is, a token living on BNB chain wasn't going to make it this cycle. So we did everything we need to do, and the types of investors at InvestFest, they understand those hard decisions. They've had they've had to make them. 
you know, you talk about founders that have been, you know, millionaires and broke and then back again. And that will happen a lot when you don't quit. And that will happen and, and you'll be able to survive and live to fight another day when you surround yourself with good people that have a common interest and goal, which is primarily your well-being, your long-term well-being. And that's what the herd is, right? We have we have this superpower where the weak, the strong, the ones that are moving fast, the ones that are moving slow, we're all tied together, we're all buoyed together by this ecosystem of, of wealth capture and generation. And when we bring on those types of, when we bring on real world businesses, people say, well, what, what's your use case? Our use case is we're a goddamn bank. The, the job of the community bank, the town, the, the, the bank at the, in the town center is to be that conduit for savings and loan. Guess what? With Save That Finance, we have that. We have it properly configured. It's like, you know, I'm talking to, to, to a long-term contributor uh, and he's like, that stolen thing wrecked us. And I said, absolutely right. But that stolen thing also gave us the vision for what needs to be long term. The Aves and the compounds have been around since the first deep, uh, since the first uh, and major second wave of DeFi, DeFi summer, and they've never left, and they've always been making money. How can we provide a meaningful opportunity? and get that core value in the communities that we serve. You know, Blackberry guy is a pastor. He has a con he has a congregation. He interfaces with other faith-based faith-based groups and just nonprofits. You know, they just had they just had that big flood and he was helping out with that. Right? Everyone involved uh, has special interest groups that they can help that are doing great things for real, real communities. Our technology and our community brings, uh, allows us to lift everyone up. Unfortunately, when, when things get tough, we all get to feel a little bit of pain. But the to tokenomics of Trunk are very clear. There's only 121 million Trunk, and that's being deflated every day. That's being burned every day. So there's an opportunity um, every day. And $1 Trunk is not going to stick around. When Trunk goes down, it's not because of the market is red or whatever it's because people in our community sold you know so it only takes the will of our community to go up and i for one going to tell you with the kind of investors that we have coming uh a hundred million dollars ain't nothing um you know they said how much much how much money you need that's like you know, you know, three million solves our, our immediate problems. You know, something more along the lines of like ten million or something like that would be ideal. You know, like I get a I, I get a call back. They're like, well, you know, it's it's time to to sign some papers. I can't say much more than that, but like, these are people that are already rich. <laughs> There's too many people in Elephant that aren't rich. I'm, I will say that for, as a fact. There's too many people in Elephant that are not rich yet. If they were rich, we'd be to the moon. If we had more, we'd be to the moon. So we need more people with influence, and we need more people with money. And those people have it. 
there's 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 dozens upon dozens of people uh, at at that conference that 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 have ten times the following that were that than the it, in real life people that were at the event. There's tons of people that have hundreds of thousands of followers, uh, close to a million followers, millions of followers in that room. There's people who hold hold office in that room, public office in that room. 